Hi there, this is Amanda Frankel with our Crafty Playdate, and I am back to show you a couple of new Christmas tags. Actually, if you are a regular local customer of mine, I had a Christmas tag making party at my house, and these are two of the six tags that we made. Uh, I did a lot of the advanced prep work for everybody because we were, you know, drinking punch and eating bad things cake and things like that um, and I wanted people to be able to just play so I did a lot of the prep work in advance um, I will show you what I used in this and I will also list it in the video description so if there's something you like here you can find it there but uh, just to let you know that the baker's twine and the ribbons here are retired ribbons I just use what I have on hand uh, when I'm making Christmas tags. And I think that's actually a really good lesson. Generally, I use things that are current, as you know, that you can get in the current catalogs. But when it comes to ribbons and trim like that, I keep even pieces, you know, that are six inches long, just small pieces of ribbon. I have a little bag of them, and then I can just pull them out and use them here and uh, make good use of them because, you know, use it up, wear it out, make do or do without, right? So that's what we're trying to do here. So we're going to make these two today. This is a, the second video in a series of three videos. So I'll make two more tags tomorrow. And I made two yesterday. So you'll be able to find them on my YouTube channel. Just make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss any of these chatty and informative videos. We're going to start with this one. This one makes me smile. Seriously, it makes me feel like Snoopy is in the room, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like Snoopy could be here? All right. So we are going to use, let me see here. We are using Pacific Point paper and it is five and a half by two. And I'll tell you, I use specific measurements. Um, this will make it a little more clear. This is four and a quarter by one and three quarters. And I will list the measurements here, but four and a quarter and five and a half, as you know, an eight and a half by 11, if you cut it long ways, it's, four and a four and a half or I'm sorry four and a quarter inch strips and if you cut it if it's long the 11 inch and you cut it in half that's five and a half so all of my measurements are super easy cut prep things so that they can be quick and quick and dirty all right so what we are using today for this is this stamp set here it's in the annual catalog and it is the making Christmas bright and we're just using this corkscrewy one here. That's the only stamp we are using on this card. Um, we are also using this Christmas bulb builder punch here. And I think that's it. Okay. So get you started. Let's see. I'm going to take this and we are also using, oh, not that one. That's the other card. That's the other card we're making today. This punch, this is one of those very nifty tag punches. Um, and I will list the name. This one is actually the scallop tag topper, as you can see the scallop here. This is, since this is two inches wide or a close approximation of two inches wide, you just slide it all the way when it's open, all the way till it stops. See that? Okay, you slide all the way till it stops, push down, and you have a tag pre-made and you throw that on the floor, like I always do. All right, so that part is already done. This, as you can see, is just such a quick card. Um, it is a photopolymer. This this stamp is a photopolymer stamp. So I am going to actually um, use a mat so that I get a good image. And I'm going to go like this because I am going to go off the edge. You see how long the stamp is and my, my paper is short. So I am going to go off the edge a little. And I don't want to get it on my mat because then I will transfer it to every card I make from here forever. From here forever. Okay, so, of course, you have to kind of do it this way. All right, so I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to stamp it, and we're going to do our best. One, two, three. It sounds like the count. One, two, three. Ah, ah, ah. Remember that? All right, Sesame Street. Come on, 50th anniversary. Everybody knows it. Actually, my navigation system right now is Cookie Monster. So when he gives directions in the car, he is Cookie Monster. All right, so easy right there so far. And you can see how quick this actually goes together. I am gonna color, if I can find my other pen, I am gonna color these little, um, 
bulbs. I had a red one too. I really need my red one too. Bear with me a second, guys. I was making notes here, so I don't know where I put it. All right, it may not be red today, but you'll get the picture. Okay, so I'm gonna sit down and color for a minute. Am I still in the screen here? I am, okay. So, to get started with these markers, as you know, these markers have two sides. They have a skinny line and a chubby line. See these, are, I'll, I'll do them all the same so it doesn't freak everybody out. They have a skinny line and a chubby line. The skinny line is a sharper point, which would be great if you were writing on something. If you were writing a card with a marker or something like that, it would be good for that. If you are coloring, you wanna use this chubbier edge. It's a brush tip, and so it goes just a little bit faster. Oh, I smeared it. Pretend like I didn't see that either. Okay, so if I had my red, that would be awesome. But since I only have three, one, two, three, right now I'm gonna avoid the red. How sad is that? Oh, are you sad for me? I'm sad for me. One, two, three. Okay. All right, and then we'll do yellow. You really need red. See, I'm gonna obsess about this red now. I knocked my pen off somewhere. You should see, if you could see like the rest of my room right now, you would be embarrassed for me. You would be because, ah, it's a little crazy. We had that group in. All right. You saw me just throw some stuff on the floor a minute ago. So that's, uh, that's why it starts to look like this. I have, it's not like I have any illusions about how that happens. I know how that happens. Okay, so pretending like I had red in there too. That's awesome. All right, we are done with this. I'm gonna put a little glue on the back and glue it down. Pretend like there's no smudge. We'll put the light. That's where that light is gonna go. Wouldn't that be perfect? And I'm just gonna glue this on here. I'm gonna use this edge as my... Um, that's my edge here. So, something to tell you about how I'm, oh, look, wouldn't you know it, my red marker reappeared. I will list all the colors that I'm using. I used Real Red, Garden Green, Pacific Point, and um, Daffodil Delight. And I will list those all in the description so you can find them. But um, so that you know, something that I think is super important for you to, to get here is if you make a mistake like this and you smear it with your hand like that, um, that's where your ornament, that's where your bulb is going to go. It doesn't have to be a super precise thing. I've already punched these out and I used the cardstock that I mentioned with the color, same colors as the pens. So real red, Pacific Point, and yellow. I could probably do a garden one since I didn't use any red, but we're using red ribbon. And then I used a little bit of red foil paper also. So the cool thing about this punch is it's separated. So I can put a strip about this wide in through the side. Chunk, you can see it this way better. Chunk, 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 chunk. I just do a whole bunch of lights and then I take a tiny, tiny silver strip. Chunk, 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 chunk. Pot, punch a bunch of silver things. And then I just sit while I'm at karate or waiting for my kids in the car. And I glue these little silver tips onto my, onto my, um, my bulbs. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little glue here. It doesn't have to be everywhere. It's going to hang off a little. So I really only want it where the silver part is connecting. And there's going to be one there. I'm doing blue in the middle. And the reason that I'm doing blue in the middle is because my tag is blue. And I want to help kind of hold the whole schmeal together. And then you would just write your, your info there. And again, only really doing where there is, see, look at, I'm gonna do it like that. Nobody knows. Okay, and then the ribbon that I'm using, again, I told you that I am using retired stuff. So you can just understand that that's gonna be life in the big city here. Um, I am using, I think it's crushed curry and garden green and white. And this may not even be Pacific Point. I don't know. It's just whatever blue I could find. And then I am using a little bit of this red ribbon. This was from last year. This is real red 
like eighth of an inch ribbon, something like that. And I'm just gonna cut a piece about the same length. If I can find my scissors, here they are. You didn't know that was a song, did you? Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna fold this in half. This is a pretty wide area, so I might be able to shove them through, but because I am super lazy, I'm gonna use a dental floss threader, which you've seen me do a hundred times. And if you haven't, go back and watch my hundreds of videos. Um, but it's a really good way to get all those edges through there without having to think too much about it and stress out my very old lady eyes. Okay, I'm gonna tuck that through there, pull, tag, done. Okay, the only thing missing is a little bit of red, but you forgave me for that. Okay, just reminding you that you forgave me for that. The next tag that we are doing is this one here. Um, also some current stuff in here. We are using, so this is the scallop tag topper punch. It doesn't show the whole punch, but this is the one it is. We're also gonna use this punch today. So we're using delightful tag topper. Um, that's this top. And we're using real red and very vanilla cardstock. And then we are using a flower punch that is also in the annual catalog. It's this one, perennial flower. And it's, it's just a normal flower, but I think when you make it in red and you put yellow behind it, it really looks like a poinsettia, poinsettia. All right, and the stamp that we're using here is um, actually from this perfectly plaid that's in the holiday catalog. So if you like this stamp set, you need to get it quickly, but it makes some cute things, but we're using this Merry Christmas right here, hopefully, if I didn't lose it. Um, Gosh, today is a craziness day, crazy day. All right, the measurements for this one, and again, I will uh, tell you now, but they are four and a quarter. See how that works, that measurement by two. Two is a good width because this is two inch, this would be a two inch strip. This would be a one and a half inch strip, and this is a one inch strip, and it's, it makes it really easy. Otherwise, you have to kind of eyeball it, but this way, if you make it one of those increments, it just slides right in. Um, so I'm sorry, this is a four and a quarter by, by two inch strip. And this one here is a three by one and seven eighths. It's only slightly narrower than the red card because otherwise my Merry Christmas stamp did not fit on there. So that's why, that's why I did it that way. I do have it right here. I did not lose it. See, you were worried that I was going to have to, I was going to have to fake something on you guys again. Okay. So we are using Real Red ink, and we are going to get it all over our fingers because that's just the way I roll. I am freezing today. It is cold. It is very cold today in my studio. I don't have my heater on either. Oh, well, it's a little high, but it's good. Oh, this one's pretty high too, so it looks pretty good. Okay, so there's our Merry Christmas. And in order to do this flower, I already punched them because like I was t explaining to you guys, I punched them from, uh, for everybody because I didn't want them to feel like they had to spend their evening punching. Um, so you need three red and one green because I'm too lazy to find another punch that makes a good leaf. And voila, there it is. It makes a beautiful leaf. So I'm going to use a bone folder a little bit. You can really just use your fingernails and go like this if you want, but it's so much easier to just flip it and do this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And I'm not going to do it to the leaves. I'm just doing it to my petals. Okay. And I'm making them all curling up. And I'm just going to do a little dot little dot. You're only going to do a little dot on two of them. And I'm just going to offset them just barely because remember I have three. My third one for my top guy is going to be the other offset. Oh geez. This is how real crafters craft by the way. We say oh geez and we make mistakes and we find ways to embellish and we put little that's where the gem goes kind of thing. Um, I could really have just done it one at a time and not freaked you guys out loud. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, so there's that. And now I'm just going to add my leaves. How about right there? Leaves, not leaves. 
leaves, leaves. All right, and I'm just gonna put a little on one petal so that I can stick it so that it shows. Hold it for a second, and while I'm holding it, I can show you these. These are the gold faceted gems. This is a partial pack of gold. They look more like this. You have a bunch of different sizes in here, um, but this is the size that I want, so I'm good with that. And they are self-adhesive, which is really very handy when you're doing something fast. While that's drying, which is pretty quick, I am going to slide my two inch strip in here. And like that other card that we just did, I'm gonna slide it all the way till it stops. Punch. And the reason that I like these toppers, besides the cute top, is it punches a hole for me, too, because I'm lazy. All right, I'm a lazy crafter. That could have been my blog, the lazy crafter. All right, I'm going to stick this in here like that. Good. Did I put that on dimensional? I did. All right, so let's put a little, I'm going to stick two under here, two dimensionals. You know why? They're inexpensive, and you want them to give it some good body, okay? I'm gonna stick that on there like that. Um, normally, I would use my tool with that I can't remember the name, but today I'm just using my scissors to get that up there. And I'm gonna stick that down and it's done. When you are taking a gem off, a lot of people will think that they need to use their scissors like this, like tweezers to lift them off or they will just pick them off. If you do that, you actually pull them right off the adhesive. It's kind of like an adhesive dot underneath. If you pull them right off that adhesive, there you're gonna have to glue them on, or you can sometimes put them right back over the adhesive dot and push down and hold it down for a second, and it'll pick it up again. But you don't wanna pull it off its dot. So use something to like, did you see how I did? I just pushed and kind of popped it up. I didn't, I didn't lift. All right, that's all you get today from me. The ribbon that I used, I told you, is also retired. Um, I'm using this piece of red ribbon here, and this is just going to go through here. Can I do it without my dental floss tool? I can because it's so big. There we go. And I have gold ribbon here. Again, retired, older one, but I liked it. This it almost looks like gold lame, like a 1980s prom dress. Gold lame. Oh my goodness. Who wore one? Who wore a lame dress? Anybody? Scary. I had a blue one. I know. I'm admitting things to you now. I wore a blue, I had a blue lame. Oh my goodness. Dress. Not for prom. Prom I looked awesome. Um, but uh I don't remember what I got it for. All right. There's a knot. Remember that I don't cut ribbon off the spool until after I've tied it, because then I don't have any waste, right? I no waste at all. If you wanna make your knot smaller, you just hold, or your bow, you just hold your knot and slide the legs. Just pull the little legs out like that. To straighten it out. And opposite of good is better. So when you think you have it pretty good, leave it alone. Don't monkey with it. All right, so there is my second one. So here are our tags for today. I threw the other ones over here. Here are our tags for today. I hope that you learned how to make some fast and easy tags. You saw how quick they were. Even if you didn't do these in advance, if you had to punch them here, it, it's all very, very quick, I promise. Um, but that's it for today. Be sure that you stop back tomorrow to see the last two tags we made. They involve candy, they involve food, so be sure you stop back. And the list of items are in the description below. If you do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to be yours. Uh, you can just click on the link below or come visit my store. Otherwise, um, be sure that you support your demonstrator. It's holidays and they are supporting their families too. Thank you so much for stopping by. Bye-bye.